Hi everyone, a star so far away that you cannot even see it with a telescope like this until now. It exploded! A supernova. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Well, I heard about this star that exploded on April 16th, or well, at least that's when we detected it. However, the star is so far away, it took light over 67 million years just to get here. So that explosion probably was about 67 million years ago. However, uh, I, I found the coordinates for the star. It's up in the constellation Virgo, and I uh, set the telescope through Nina to pick it up to see if I can see the star that exploded. Wow, that star is bright. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit like at the bottom and leave your comments as well. Also, it would not hurt my feelings if you subscribe to my channel. Anyway, uh, the channel is dedicated mostly to astronomy and using the telescopes I have here in my heavenly backyard garden. Well, speaking of garden, I do a lot of garden videos as well. So a combination of garden and astronomy, it's nature. Speaking of nature, I also do some weather updates when necessary, when big storms threaten the southeast United States, and particularly when hurricanes start spinning around in the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Nonetheless, this is heavenly backyard astronomy and gardening. Now the telescope that I used was the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor triplet telescope. And it's sitting on top of the Skywatcher EQR6 Pro mount. The camera I used was, was the ZWO ASI 071 one-shot color camera. It had the sensor temperature set at minus 10 degrees Celsius. I'm in a Bortle area of about 4.5, so I did use the Orion Sky Glow filter to help cut down on the scattering of light from the light pollution in this area. So I set the telescope up and I began racing the clouds. The sky was clear at the moment and I thought I'd get a, a couple of minutes, perhaps a couple of hours of data, but as those clouds approached, dry air flowed in and the clouds evaporated, hence I was able to get over four and a half hours of data on this supernova HRS. Well, there it is in Virgo uh, over here and the uh, uh, area of M60 and NGC 4647. So if we zoom in on this, there you can see the two galaxies uh, within each other. Uh, this is M60 here and this is NGC uh, 46. 47 and uh, uh, this one I think is somewhere in the ballpark of 57 million light years away and this one is somewhere between 63 and 79 million light years away. So if you notice in between here nothing. Now the supernova is supposedly be is supposedly right in this area here. Uh, so we'll have to go and look at the uh, images from Nina. So let's go to there. Let's go to Nina. So let's take an, uh, some additional views from Nina, the different sky surveys. And again, you can see no clouds, no clouds, no star in between the two galaxies. Here's another view, the uh, ST, uh, SCI sky survey. And again, um, it's no star in between the two galaxies. So uh, that's what it's supposed to look like, or what it did look like before April 19th, April 16th. April 16th. Looking at the ESO sky survey, uh, kind of yellow tinted here, but again, though, you can see nothing in between the two galaxies, M60 and NGC 4647. Uh, it's clear of stars. There we are in Nina. There you can see that the uh, view from my location is fairly clear throughout the nighttime hours. No obstruction to trees, just barely getting above the tree line. And the uh, supernova is somewhere in that glare right there. That's M60 and NGC 4647, even though it says NGC 4649. Um, I thought at first it was in this area over here, but no, it's right in this area here. I had it set at 600 seconds or 10 minute exposures. And again, clearing the treetops and clear throughout the entire nighttime hours uh, with no obstructions. So. 
let's go into the imaging and see what it looks like. And uh, there it is over there. At first, again, I thought it was going to be, um, well, there it is right there. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit to see. Uh, at first, I thought it was going to be over here. But now, actually, it's over there. So zooming in, this is a uh, subframe coming in. And um, there's that bright dot there. I mean, that's bright. Look how bright that is. There it is. That is it right there. I thought at first, when I first saw it, it was a background, or actually a foreground star, but no, that's the supernova. It is brighter than the NGC 4647, the core. So that, that must have been one heck of an explosion. My tracking was spot on throughout the nighttime hours, less than um, a second of arc error. So I was getting some really good tracking uh, throughout the night. So I was able to get these good 10 minute exposures with the stars remaining nice and round and unbloated. But uh, there's one star in there that's really large and that's the Supernova 2022 HRS. There's a full, full view from the Eon uh, telescope, the Orion Eon 130. Wow. So here is one of the 10 minute subframes and there you can see uh, the supernova is extremely bright in just that 10 minute exposure. Let's look at some of the others. Um, this is the uh, annotation showing all the different galaxies uh, around that area. Of course, uh, you know, we're looking at M60 and NGC 4647. That's where the supernova 2022 HRS is located. One of the things I noticed is that uh, the it seems like the magnitude is increasing. Uh, it started off at, at, at a relatively well weak magnitude of uh, 19, I think it was. Let me, let me look. Started off with a magnitude of 15 on April 16th, and on the 19th there was an estimated magnitude of. Uh, 13.8, then 12.9 on the 24th, on the 28th, 12.65. On the 30th this morning when I took this picture, it looked like it was brighter than that. I mean, it's brighter uh, It's brighter than NGC 4647, or just as bright anyway. Uh, and, and, and that, I think, is magnitude 10. So I don't think it's at magnitude 10, but I, you know, I don't have a way of calculating magnitude. But, you know, for a star that is four, let's see, how far? For a star that is over 63 million light years away. First of all, just to be able to see it is one thing. And number two is to see it this bright. That's phenomenal. When I first heard about this supernova, I thought I'd go ahead and point the telescope at it over in the constellation Virgo. I thought I was gonna see just a little bit of a dot of a star in the galaxy, NGC 4647. However, I was surprised at just how bright that explosion is. That must have been one massive explosion. You know, any life forms in and around that star, it's obviously vanished, it's been evaporated. That the star explosion was so massive. Anyway, uh, it, it's interesting what goes on throughout the universe, uh, not only in our galaxy, but in galaxies far, far away. And the heavens are just filled with these majestic wonders. Some of them are catastrophic, some of them are beautiful. Who knows, in the future, this might turn into a beautiful nebula to uh, look at. Nonetheless, it's up in the sky. And I always say, when you get the chance, go out at night, look up at the stars, and then look. All these stars are in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.